Hi all, today we are going to discuss about grading of cables. So if you are taking any cable, the let us assume the conductor radius is equal to R and the outer radius up to the sheath is equal to R1 and in the intermediate or in the material, there is a material which is having a permittivity of epsilon and it is an insulating material. So if you want to find the electric field intensity or the gradient how it is distributed, electric field intensity at a distance x from the center of the conductor can be given by Q is the charge per unit length Q by 2 pi into epsilon is the permittivity of the medium which I can write as epsilon naught into epsilon r multiplied by x. So now at the surface if you calculate this as the x is increasing let us assume I am drawing here this is how the electric field is increasing or changing with respect to x. So on the surface of the conductor the electric field intensity will be maximum and inside the conductor electric field intensity will be equal to 0 because the conductor is a equipotential surface or the potential gradient will be 0 inside an ideal conductor and the electric field will go on decaying as you are going away. So we can tell that the electric field will be maximum on the surface of the conductor and it will be minimum on the sheath. So this will be equal to minimum. So we can tell that whenever you are designing an insulating material, that insulating material is designed to withstand these values of that stress or we can tell if you are designing the insulating material, you have to design the insulating material to withstand minimum this value of the E maximum. Let us assume this material is having a dielectric strength of G. So always this G should be greater than or equal to this E maximum generally we multiply it by a safety factor F so that under fall conditions or with respect to time even if it absorbs the moisture or degrades with respect to time still the value of the potential it can easily withstand the whichever is the gradient that is coming at the surface of the conductor it is not going to break down. Now you can see clearly that the maximum value of the gradient is maximum at the surface of the conductor but gradually the electric field is going on decreasing or the potential gradient is going on decreasing. So let us take for example I am taking the material at this point. So at this point actually it can withstand the potential gradient of E maximum but actually the potential gradient at this point is much more less than that or we can tell the material is underutilized. As the material is underutilized, so automatically the cost and size of the cable is increasing. You have to keep more thick size, thickness of the insulation. So we are going to prove this by taking a numerical at the latter part of this video. So I am just making the summary of what we have observed till now. Since the electrostatic distribution in insulating material is not uniform, the insulating material is not properly utilized. This is the first observation. So by grading, the utilization of the insulating material can be improved. So what is grading? Grading is the process of achieving uniform electrostatic stress in the dielectric of the cable. So by grading the cable of, by grading of the cable, which is cable is having the same size, it could be operated at a higher voltages. That means if a cable size is fixed, that cable can be operated at higher voltages by doing the grading or for the same operating voltage, a cable of relatively small size can be used. That means thickness of the cable required will decrease. So automatically cost will decrease and it will be very easy to carry and lay on the ground. These are the advantages. So in order to achieve this, there are basically two methods are used in practice. One is the capacitive grading. So in the capacitive grading, more than one dielectric material will be used. So we are going to see this in detail. Now intersheath grading, in intersheath grading, same material will be used, insulating material will be same, but the potential at certain radius are held at certain value using the metal sheath. So this also we are going to discuss in detail. So today we are going to discuss about the capacitive grading. So capacitive grading. So in the capacitive grading, we know that if you are taking a conductor, let us take the radius is equal to R. So I am taking the outer radius is equal to capital R or we can take it as R1 whatever you take. So I want this in such a way that at the surface of the conductor, we know the electric field intensity will be maximum. I want that electric field intensity should be same throughout so that the material is 100% utilized. Whatever it is designed for, it is utilized. The value of E is equal to the constant throughout the length of this. How, how to achieve this? So we can tell the value of the Ex, that means E at any point x above the conductor will be equal to Q divided by 2 pi epsilon into x. So this value should be maintained constant. This value should be maintained constant. In order to maintain this constant, Q is already constant, 2 pi is constant because Q is the charge per unit length or current carried by the conductor. So here the variable is epsilon and x. So this can be achieved by making the product of epsilon and x is equal to 
constant or we can tell that the epsilon is inversely proportional to x or otherwise this epsilon also I can divide as epsilon not into epsilon r. So, we can tell that this epsilon r or the relative permeability permittivity should be inversely proportional to x. That means, as the value of the x is increasing, the value of epsilon r should decrease. So, the product will be maintained constant or we can tell we should have a material such that at the surface of the conductor, let us take this is I am representing by epsilon 1. So, at this point, let us assume as epsilon 2. So, it should be like that this epsilon as the conductor, we can see that as x is increasing, automatically epsilon will goes on decreasing. That means, epsilon will be greater than epsilon 2 or this material should be like that the epsilon should go on changing as you are going away from the surface of the conductor. So, this can be achieved by taking infinite number of materials and cascading them together, but this is practically not possible. So, practically what we do as this is not practically possible, we go for multiple layers generally 2 to 3 layer of the materials whose permittivity will go on changing. So, in order to analyze this one, there are different possible ways of analyzing this one. So, before proceeding to that, let us proceed how the cable will be constructed for doing the grading, any type of grading. So, it will be designed like this. So, these are the materials. So, let us take for example, it is having a radius of r. So, the radius up to the first sheet, this one is equal to r1 and radius up to here is r2. Let us take one more material because two to three materials are generally used. Actually, it will be circular. So, this will be R3. So, the materials that are prepared here, this material will have epsilon 1, this material has epsilon 2, this material has epsilon 3. And let us assume the dielectric strength of each of these materials, the dielectric strength of this material I am representing by G, this is G1, this is G2 and this material is having dielectric strength of G3. So, now I have to optimistically design or decide what should be the values of this radius R1 r2 and r3 for these materials and in which order of the epsilon should be there so that the maximum working stress will be uniformly distributed among them so that the size of the cable will be decreased for a given voltage or the same cable can be used for higher voltage rating. So, for this there are two possible criteria that can be obtained. The first criteria is same going with same factor of safety. That means, all the material have different values of g but having the same factor of safety. And the second type is going for same working stress. That means, that value of E maximum is same for each material or each type of material we are using. So, let us take one by one in detail now. So, first I am starting with for the same factor of safety. So, for the same factor of safety if you are doing, then we know the gradient at the surface of the conductor will be Q divided by 2 pi epsilon 1 into R because I am taking the conductors like this. So, these are the different thickness. So, this one is equal to R, this is R1, this is R2 and let us take this as this is R3. Okay, Because the first conductor I am taking, so this is having epsilon 1, this is epsilon 2 this is epsilon 3. I am calculating at the surface of the conductor at this point. So, this will be equal to because we have to take the same factor of safety. Let us assume G is the dielectric strength divided by the factor of safety. That will be my maximum value of the gradient at the surface at that point. So, let us take it as equation number 1. Similarly, maximum gradient at a radius of R1 because the next material is starting. So, that will be equal to Q by 2 pi into epsilon 2. The second material is having epsilon 2 and the radius is equal to R1 this will be equal to G2 divided by the factor of safety. Let us take it as equation number 2. And similar is the case for the third material I can write Q divided by 2 pi epsilon 3 into R2. This will be equal to G3 divided by F. Let us take it as equation number 3. Now, from equation number 1, 2 and 3, I can calculate the value of the Q. So, from this, I can write my value of the Q is equal to. So, this will be multiplied in the second side. So, this will be G1 divided by F. So, this will go to there. So, this will become 2 pi into epsilon 1 into r. So, this will be equal to from the second equation, it will be g2 by f multiplied by 2 pi epsilon to r1. This will be equal to g3 by f into 2 pi epsilon 3 into r2. This is what we get. And for all these equations, 2 pi is common. So, 2 pi, 2 pi, 2 pi I can cancel. Similar is the case, the factor of safety f also I can cancel. So, we can tell from these equations that the value of epsilon 1 into 
r into g1 will be equal to epsilon 2 into r1 into g2 is equal to epsilon 3 r2 into g3. And we know the radius will go on increasing. So, r is less than r1 is less than r2. So, we can tell that because to make them equal, so the value of epsilon 1 g1 because r is less, it should be greater than epsilon 2 g2 should be greater than epsilon t g3 or from this I can tell the product of the permittivity of the material multiplied by the dielectric strength of the material should be in the decreasing order as you are going away from the surface of the conductor. So, now the operating voltage of this I can calculate V is equal to because integration of E. So, the integration will be minus I am moving from R1 to I am moving up to surface of the conductor. Let us take it as E1 dx. And the second one, because I have to do the addition of all the voltages, this will be minus integration from R2 to R1. This is E2 dx. And similarly, the third one will be again minus integration of capital R to R2 E3 dx. Or if you are substituting this, you will get this as Q by 2 pi into 1 by epsilon 1 into ln of R1 divided by R plus 1 by epsilon 2 ln of R2 divided by R1 plus 1 by epsilon 3 ln of capital R divided by R2 or R3 divided by R2 because in our example we are taking it as R3. So, this will be R3 divided by R2. This is what we get. So, let us see the second case with the same maximum working stress. If you are maintaining the maximum same working stress, so how it is going to change? So, I am assuming that the maximum working stress at surface of each conductor will be same. That will be equal to above the conductor will be Q by 2 pi epsilon 1 into R. This will be equal to Q divided by 2 pi epsilon 2 into R1. This will be equal to Q divided by 2 pi epsilon 3 into R2. So, I am taking it same or this will be same because Q by 2 pi is same for all or we can tell this will be same one epsilon 1 r is equal to epsilon 2 r 1 is equal to epsilon 3 r 2 and we know the value of r 1 r is less than r 1 is less than r 2 or we can tell that epsilon 1 is greater than epsilon 2 is greater than epsilon 3. That means, whichever material have the highest permittivity that should be stayed near to the conductor as you go away the permittivity of the material will goes on decreasing. So, using this also I can achieve. So, till now we have discussed the theory, but what is the proof how it is going to decrease in order to understand that let us take one example so that the concept of this grading will be completely clear to you. So, I am taking one example the conductor and overall diameter of a single core cable are 3 centimeter and 8.5 centimeter. The insulation system comprises of two types of insulating materials having permittivities of 5 and 9 respectively. If the working stress is 30 kV per centimeter RMS calculate it is asked to calculate two things they are asked the first one is the thickness of each layer and permissible operating voltage this is the first one asked and the second one it is asked permissible operating voltage if a homogeneous insulation of 
permittivity 5 is used in this case how it will come so let us try to solve this one so i am just trying to solve this so it is given there the conductor is there so above this they are used the two materials so two materials are having different permittivity so let us assume this is epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 so this radius is equal to r let us take this radius as r1 and this radius is equal to r2 and we have to do the grading of this so while doing the grading we have already seen the grading should be like this the epsilon 1 which is near to the conductor should have the maximum permittivity and as you go away it should go on decreasing so automatically two permittivities are there one is 9 and another is 5 so obviously this will be 9 and this will be equal to 5 this way we have to take and it is given there the radius of the conductor will be diameter is given as 3 so this will be 3 by 2 this will be equal to 1.5 centimeters and the value of r1 is unknown and the value of R2 is given because outer diameter is given as 8.5 divided by 2. This will become 4.25 centimeters. So, let us try to solve the first case. That means doing the capacitance grading. So, in the case of capacitance grading, I am making my G max is equal to constant, which will be equal to Q by 2 pi epsilon 1 R will be equal to Q by 2 pi epsilon 2 into R1. This is what we have to make. Or we can tell that epsilon 1 multiplied by R is equal to epsilon 2 multiplied by r1 or from this i can calculate my value of r1 is equal to epsilon 1 into r divided by epsilon 2 so epsilon is nothing but epsilon not into epsilon r epsilon not is there both in the denominator and numerator it will cancel out only we can write this epsilon this epsilon r only so i am writing this as a 9 multiplied by 1.5 divided by 5 so this will become equal to 2.7 centimeters so it is asked to find the thickness of the layers so thickness of so, first layer of the insulation will be equal to 2.7 is the outer diameter, outer radius and inner radius is 1.5. This will be equal to 1.2 centimeters. So, similar is the way thickness of the second layer will be equal to 4.25 minus 2.7. This will be equal to 1.55 centimeters. So, now let us calculate the working voltage. So, before calculating the working voltage, we know the maximum value of the dielectric field or the electric field will be q divided by 2 pi epsilon 1 into r after the first layer and we can calculate the voltage of the first layer v1 will be i have to do minus integration of edx so we have to do the integration from the outer radius of the first material is r1 and the inner radius is r that means surface of the conductor this will be q divided by 2 pi epsilon 1 x into dx or otherwise this if you substitute you will get it as q divided by 2 pi epsilon 1 into ln of r1 divided by r or this i can write just substituting in terms of e maximum so this i can write as e maximum into r because q by 2 pi epsilon 1 so this one this q by 2 pi epsilon 1 i am replacing because this is nothing but r multiplied by e maximum ln of r1 divided by r because i don't know the charge i can write in this form so this is v1 similar way i can calculate for v2 so we know the voltage v is equal to v1 plus v2 so, this I can write as because E maximum is same in both the cases. So, E maximum into R into ln of R1 divided by R plus E maximum into R1 ln of R2 divided by R1. So, this if I substitute, so E max is same, this will be 30 multiplied by R is 1.5 into ln of 2.7 divided by 1.5 plus 2.7 into ln of 4.25 divided by 2.7. So, if you calculate this, you will get it as 63.17 kV. This is the operating voltage by going with the capacitance grading and maintaining the same maximum value of the maximum stress. So, let us see the second case. The grading is not done. So, in that case, I can write in the same way V is equal to the E maximum value into I have to take from the surface of the conductor. So, R into ln of r2 is the outer radius divided by radius of the conductor because entire thing is single material only so this will become equal to 30 multiplied by 1.5 into ln of 4.25 divided by 1.5 so this will come as 46.86 kv you can see here using the grading i can operate up to 63.17 kv without grading i can operate only up to 46.86 kv for the same value of maximum stress that is permitted on the material surface of the material or surface of the conductor 
getting it so you can tell that by using the capacitive grading i can use it for operate it for a higher voltages i hope this complete capacitive grading is clear to you if you still have any queries you can leave your comments in the comment section below i will answer to your queries from there thank you thank you very much hello friends welcome to ekeda title of the lecture is grading of cable so grading is defined as a process of equalizing the stress in the dielectric of the cable see i have told you this that electric stress is maximum at the surface of the conductor see it is g max g we can say electric stress or gradient it is maximum at the surface of the conductor or the innermost part of the conductor while it is minimum at the outer sheath of the conductor so if the stress is equal to all the dielectric of the conductor then the thickness of the conductor is reduced but if the stress is maximum at any of the dielectric then it increase the thickness of the cable and if the thickness increase then obviously the cost of the cable also increases cost of cable also increases so there are two methods of grading the cable methods of grading first method is capacitance grading or we can say dielectric grading and the second method is the intersheet grading so first we will see the capacitance grading so capacitance grading in this type of grading the homogeneous dielectric is replaced by layers of dielectric having a different value of relative permittivity so for getting a uniform stress an infinite number of dielectric will be required so in this type of grading homogeneous dielectric is replaced by layers of dielectric having a different value of relative permittivity so for getting a uniform stress an infinite number of dielectric will be required so see this diagram the electric stress can be uniformly distributed by using two or more dielectric having suitable permittivity now we know dielectric stress is given by this is equals to q upon 2 pi epsilon not into epsilon not r into x so we consider a cable having three dielectrics of relative permittivity epsilon 1 epsilon 2 epsilon 3 such that epsilon 1 is less than epsilon 2 it is less than epsilon 3 and this r1 r2 and r capital r be the outer radius of the dielectric r1 r2 and capital r be the outer radius of the dielectric now we will find out the potential difference across the inner layer so the potential difference across the inner layer v1 is equals to see this diagram we have to find out the potential difference across inner layer so this is integration from r to r1 sorry this is r1 and this is r2 so potential difference across the inner layer is v1 is equals to integration from r to r1 so potential difference across the inner layer is 
V1 is equals to C integration from R to R1. This R to R1 GX into DX. And we know the value of GX to put the value R, R to R1 for inner layer. So GX is equals to Q upon 2 pi epsilon naught into epsilon naught 1 into X dx. Now q upon 2 pi epsilon naught epsilon naught 1 is constant 1 by x dx. So this is equals to v1 is equals to q upon 2 pi epsilon naught epsilon naught 1 log natural log R1 by R. Now, if we multiply and divide it by R, so we know this that this this term is our G max. This is equals to G max into R natural log R1 by R. This is our V1 potential difference across the inner layer. Now similarly find out the potential difference between R1 and R2. Means across the middle layer. Middle layer is R1 and R2. This R1 and R2. So this is equal to V2. This is equal to from R1 to R2, Gx into Dx and we know R1 to R2, we know Gx is equals to Q upon 2 pi epsilon naught into epsilon naught 2 x Dx. So this V2, this is equals to Q upon 2 pi epsilon naught into epsilon naught 2 r1 to r2 1 by x into dx and this is equal to q upon 2 pi epsilon naught into epsilon naught 2 natural log r2 by r1 now if we multiply and divide it by r1 by r1 now we know this is our maximum electric stress. So this is equals to G max into R1 natural log R2 by R1. So we can write this as G max 1 electrical stress 1 and this is electrical stress 2. Now similarly find out the potential difference between R2 and capital R. Means across the outer layer. See this. A outer layer R2 and R. So this is equals to. V3 this is equals to. Q upon 2 pi epsilon naught into epsilon naught 3. X into. Sorry. Limit from. R2 to R. Dx. Now this is equals to Q upon 2 pi epsilon naught into epsilon naught 3 R2 to R 1 by x into dx and this is equals to Q upon 2 pi epsilon naught into epsilon naught 3 natural log R by R2. Similarly here if we multiply and divide it by R2 so this is our G max electrical stress maximum for this circle so this is equals to g max 3 r2 log e r by r2 now the total potential difference between core and earth sheet therefore the total potential difference between core and earth Sheet 
this v is equals to v1 plus v2 plus v3 now put the value of v1 v2 and v3 this v is equals to g max 1 r natural log r1 by r plus g max 2 R1 log R2 by R1 plus G max 3 R2 log R by R2. This is the total potential difference between core and earth. And the capacitance of the cable, we know C is equals to Q by V, so this Q upon V one is Q upon two pi epsilon naught into epsilon naught one log R one by R plus Q upon two pi epsilon naught into epsilon naught two log R two by R one plus Q upon 2 pi epsilon naught into epsilon naught 3 log r by r2. Take q upon 2 pi epsilon naught common. So this is q upon 2 pi epsilon naught. So 1 upon epsilon naught 1 log r1 by r plus 1 upon epsilon naught 2 log r2 by r1 plus 1 upon epsilon naught 3 log r by r2 so this q to cancel out and this is equals to 2 pi epsilon naught upon 1 upon epsilon naught 1 log r1 by r plus 1 by epsilon naught 2 log r2 by r1 plus 1 by epsilon naught 3 log r by R two. This is the capacitance of the cable. Topic name power system. Unit six, topic five, part four. So this is the capacitance of the cable, and the maximum stress is given by. so we know maximum stress one this is equals to q upon 2 pi epsilon naught into epsilon 1 into r for two this is equals to q upon 2 pi epsilon naught into epsilon naught 2 into r1 and for three this is equals to q upon 2 pi epsilon naught into epsilon naught 3 into r3 So, in case the maximum stress is the same in the each layer, then G max one this is equals to G max two this is equals to and G max three this is equals to G max. In case the maximum stress is same in the each layer, then epsilon r this is equals to epsilon two into r one and this is equals to epsilon three into r two. now the total voltage applied across the cable this is equals to v this is equals to g max r log natural log r1 by r plus r1 natural log r2 by r1 plus R two natural log capital R by R two. So G max represents the peak value of electric stress. This G max represents the peak value of electrical stress, and all the voltages are represented in peak value, not in RMS value. now this is the first method capacitance grading or dielectric 
ग्रेडिंग सेकेंड मेथड इज द इंटरशीत ग्रेडिंग सो इंटरशीत ग्रेडिंग इज द मेथड ऑफ कीपिंग द ग्रेजुअल वोल्टेज अक्रॉस द इंसुलेटर by using the layers of insulator so in this method uniform voltage is developed across the cable insulators across the cable insulators and total layer of insulation material is divided into number of layers by providing intersheet and you know intersheets are nothing but intersheets are thin metallic cylindrical sheets cylindrical sheets concentric with one conductor and place between the conductor and the outer sheet so consider a cable with one inter sheet so as shown in this figure there is a cable with one inter sheet only so this r1 is the radius of the inter sheet and capital r is the radius of the outer sheet so as you see in this diagram inter sheets are the thin metallic cylindrical sheets concentric with the conductor and place between the conductor and the outer sheath this is the outer sheath this is conductor so in so this inter sheath it is placed between the conductor and the outside sheath now suppose v1 is the voltage between the core and the inter sheath and v2 is the voltage between the core and v2 is the voltage between the inter sheath and the outer sheath and capital v this is the voltage between the core and the sheath so v is equals to v1 plus v2 so maximum potential gradient in the second layer maximum potential gradient in the second layer is given by so maximum potential gradient so this maximum potential g this is equals to v1 upon r natural log r1 by r see this maximum potential gradient this is equals to v1 upon r natural log r1 by r so maximum stress between core and inter sheet this is equals to maximum stress between core and inter sheet this is equals to g max 1 v upon v1 upon r natural log r1 by r see that this g max this is e this g max this is equals to v1 upon this r natural log r1 by r similarly maximum stress between inter sheet and outer sheet maximum stress so g max 2 this is equals to v2 upon r1 natural log r by r1 see 
the maximum stress between this inner sheath and outer outer sheath this is equals to v2 upon r1 log r by r1 so if the two potential gradients are equal then g max this is equals to v1 upon r natural log r1 by r and this is equals to v2 upon r1 natural log r capital r by r1 also v is equals to v1 plus v2 so this is equals to g max r natural log r1 by r plus r1 natural log capital r by r1 now some limitations of grading so for capacitance grading the main disadvantage of capacitance grading is is that range of permittivity value of insulating material available for cable insulation is limited and the permittivity of the layers this permittivity of the layers may not remain constant thereby change the stress distribution and cause the insulation break at normal operating condition second for intersheath grading so the intersheath layers are very thin and are liable to be damaged during transportation or installation also thin intersheath are not able to carry the damage charging current of long cable line and thus the current carrying capacity of the cable is reduced so these are the limitations for capacitance and intersheath grading thank you